be honest, be truthful. What do you have to lose? What? At that age. But they would rather work with uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, the same oppressive system, okay? In order to further cage you. And if the system is going to kill you, they will be the first to come out and say, you deserve that because you are pressing phone. Hmm? Somebody had this for him. My fraternal greetings to everyone. Today I want to talk about the incoherence upon incoherence of Wale Shoinka. Enough is enough. We've tolerated this man for a long time. It's a big shame to the literary, to the literary community. Wale Shoinka, you are simply and squarely one of the intellectual idiots we have in this country. You are a man without principles, a thorough bred and incurable hypocrite. That's what you are, and nothing less. No wonder it is argued that the so called Nobel Prize you won in 1986 emanated from the boardroom of politics. And now it is true. Your attitude, your everything, your actions and inactions give credence to those assertions. If we want to talk about men of integrity, let's begin to contemporaries. Are we talking about Chinua Achebe, the immortal sage and father of modern African literature? Are we talking about J.P. Clark, Africa's most lyrical poet? Are we talking about Neo Sundare, the scourge of tyrants? Are we talking about Christopher Okibo, who lived and die for what he believed in. Are we talking about Gabriel Okara? Who are we going to juxtapose you with, Wole Shoinka? Those names I mentioned are names that we can all go to invoke as a source of pride and for moral inspirations. They are men who have engraved their names on the marble of integrity, unblemished men. Men of integrity, men who are conscious of their good names, their global good names. But that is not you, Wole Shoinka. Your son served as a commissioner for health in Ogun State. He destroyed the health sector in that state, looted everything and left. He left the health sector in Ogun State in Shambu. That is your own son. Which of the sons of your contemporaries are smeared? their father's name in that way. Mention one. Today's government is 100 times worse than the GEJ's government. None of you came out to protest. You even wrote describing the wife of GEJ as a Shibopotamus and the president himself, GEJ, as a King Nebuchadnezzar. But everything happened in this government, people like you never came out to protest. But a few days ago, you came out to call the youths fascist and talking rubbish. Please go and sit down. Are you following? I mean, let us be truthful. Don't be hypocrite. I mean, if you want to be, if you, if he says he's a member of APC, at least you will deal with that. That we are, okay, we are dealing with APC member. Why are you hiding behind that name? That name that a lot of people actually grew up and they were like, that iconic image and all that. Why would you actually throw all of that out? And then go straight after the young people who are fighting for their lives. And you leave out those who are actually publicly, online, on, online, offline, threaten people because of where they come from. Then you turned around with the same wallet you can just turned around and said, obedient movement is Igbo movement, but he couldn't say it. Just exactly what the APC, Egbekegbe always kind of, you know? So you are the wrong ones, bad losers. Bad losers. They want to burn Nigeria. They want to overthrow Tinumbu. So that's dog whistle. So when those ones start talking now, they will say, ah, Professor Wale Shoinka already said it now. Do you know that they are already working to overthrow Tinumbu and install uh, Peter Obi? That's how stupid they can be. Oh. I'm not going to be surprised, though. They are already calling for his arrest. Eh? A fraudulent election that has divided Nigeria instead of uniting Nigeria. 
a ruined country by the APC, a Bekekbe that deserves no, no political office again in Nigeria, in all sense of it, too, APC, PDP. They should never be seen anywhere. But look at what they are doing. And all of you, the ombud slaves, generational slaves, you already shared your oppressors. You are fighting for PDP, fighting for APC, and you are telling them, this uh, is the Igbo. Igbo will never be kiniko kiniko like in a country whereby they force all of you together. Eh? Do you think you have a country? Eh? Do you think so? Well, time will tell. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get to that part uh, where I'm going to take calls, I am about to take you on a journey that is likely going to leave you in tears and angry. Okay? Ordinarily, I am not a fan of this Nigeria young uh, talent. I don't really, not like their musical, because I kind of all have all this selection of music in my car. That's the only time I actually listen to music when I'm inside my car. But I don't really know these guys. But three days ago, eh? There was a breaking news. And thanks uh, to Twitter. When the news broke that a young uh, talent called Mobad eh, is dead, the reactions of everybody was like, I think that brought back the memory of, for somebody like me, when I kind of started following and following and following, what happened? What was that? Like, what happened to him? Da Green was the one that came to my own. They're like, well, in my own time, it was Da Green that was uh, this young, sharp talent that some of us just kid into. I bet those who were older then eh, were wondering what was Da Green singing. Because that's how I feel now. When I listen to some of their songs, I'm like, what, what's that? But you see, this young man, they announced that he is dead. Kilo Shele, how could a young man just die? Then information started field. You know, this is him. 27 years old. So I didn't know him sincerely. But I know about the Malians. And I think I've spoken about the Malians one time ago. If some of you have been a regular on Mayagun's diary political, if you remember, eh, when they arrested eh, Naira Mali for credit card fraud. You remember that time? And it was kind of displayed. And then I was like, well, I was digging, oh, Naira Mali has always been like a criminal, but you can say he's a reformed criminal. This guy was arrested for drug, uh, drug running. I mean, sorry, what's that called? Uh, uh, possession of drug to distribute. He was a drug dealer at the age of 19 years. He was arrested for drug dealing. He was arrested for sexual ass assault. He was arrested for armed robbery, armed robbery. In Lewisham, in London, when he was just 19. So to some people, it was like he turned his life around and look at him, a great talent, okay? is like, you know, inspiring other young people to use their talent, okay? To what? To change their lives instead of going into life of crime. So it was like that. But how come after that fame, they arrested him for credit card fraud in Nigeria? What did they stop? They were actually into a lot. And the death of this guy, this young man, eh? has opened a can of warm. And this is not even just a Naira Mali anymore. And it was after the announcement of his death that I realized that Nigerians, they have celebrity criminals. Celebrity criminals, Ike. Ah, celebrity criminals, do. If you are on there, uh, for example, now if I am live, like that, I am live now. These celebrity criminals, yeah, in uh, mostly in Lagos anyway, they can come around and just drive down right now. And they can come and drag me out of my house when I'm still live here. And they will now start their own life where they are beating me and beating me up because I just insulted one of them. Or I just said something that they didn't like. They said these celebrity criminals eh, in Nigeria, they have their own police guard, they have their own this, you know what I mean? They are so connected that when we started tracing no more, Everything entered the Tifnubu backyard, you. Eh? As people are talking about Mobad, 
and everything that happened to him, all the informations that started coming out, drug dealing, entertainment industry in Nigeria, drug dealing and drug running and drug uh, selling and all of that. And those who are running all these plays and all these uh, things, eh, they have direct connection with Pablo Escobati. As then they go to Dubai with him, then they go to Mecca with him, they are in Abuja with him, they are everywhere. You can't touch them. You can't report them. Wait, 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 wait. Are you, are you serious? Ah, my ego, <laughs> you have no idea. These ones are not NURTWO. They are like courts. The name of their own court group. Eh? It's not like your regular court, 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 court. This one's like, they're like father of all courts because they have the political connection. That if Numbu became president means if you cross their line, eh? Baba, if you cross their line, when I was following the whole thing for the first time, eh, when I saw the life of this young man, what they did to him, even what they are still doing right now, even after his death, Baba, I realized that I may be like a strong man, strong man, strong man, strong man, eh, strong man, strong man. If I happen to be in Nigeria, eh, they go shape me or kill me. Trust me, the fear alone that you have nobody to report them to. You are on your own. They will, see, they will kidnap you. Okay? Beat you. Bloody. Make video of it. Brag about it. And warn others that if we catch you too. You see what we do to my ego? If we catch you. I said, eh? He said, ah, Baba. <clears throat> no cross them all. Now, let me now tell you the story. More bad. Based on uh, what I have managed to pick uh, so far. Now, you see this young man, few years back, okay? Uh, he's from, originally from Korodu, okay? A, that came from a very, very humble background. Now, you know, these days, eh, if you are good, once you put your content on social media online and it goes viral, if you are really good, you are likely going to get, uh, what do you call it? You're going to get uh, the attention you need and you may get support and sponsor. So this young man, Mo Bad, they said with all his own boys, all his guys within the hood in Nikorodu, doing their freestyle, freestyle here and there. One of their freestyle video made it online and it went viral on TikTok or so. Like millions of people saw it. It was around the time that Naira Mali was also kind of a reigning. So he started the Malian record. Now in that Malian record, it was like a record to rehabilitate and help young people from the hood. So that you saw those big, 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 big uh, album, uh, what, do you, what do you call them? All uh, big, big uh, producer, you know? labels, they call them label. All those big, big labels. Most of them are not really interested in this uh, young talent. So Naira Mali attracted these young, young kids, including Mobad. And since they had their own audience online, eh? and then uh, Naira Mali himself had to do as you know, his own audience online, it was like all they needed to do was just to stream. So to them, this guy was dropping it after it. And it was, Naira Mali was also their own key into the entertainment uh, you know, show world. Which means it will be it will ensure that you book them for show. They appear here and they get paid apart from the streaming money and all that. That was the arrangement. Okay? But it wasn't long that people sensed that they started having problems. What could be going? What could be wrong? Is it money? What could be this or that? So they said Naira Mali was accusing him of drug overuse. Okay? That is gotten so bad that it will just forget his own password. Password to his uh, Instagram, password to his uh, social media account, password to his uh, bank account. You know, it's like forgetful. To make it worse, he's forgetting his own line when they are trying to like uh, record or they are performing as well. So it's sort of like he's losing his mind, kind of. Eh? And the guy was like, no. This is the situation, okay? The rumor has it that bringing all of them together with the intention of uh, 
promoting their talent for music, there is more underneath. They said, many of them were subjected to ritual oath taking. Now, that could be speculation, no problem, but I heard it, all right? Ritual oath taking that they will hold, they will, they will be loyal to their group, which happen to now look like, more or less, like not a label, okay? Record label, but a court group. And they said this guy kind of rejected or so. So they said they gave him time. Remember, he's already there. Everybody already seen his face and all that. Oh. He signed a contract, so there shouldn't be any issue. But during all of that time, eh, they said behind the scene, they were giving him time to think about it. Because underneath, it is not just that music. When I say drug, 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 some of you think it's about drug abuse. This is not even just about drug use now. They were using these young men as drunk mule. You know what is called that? Drunk mule. I mean, drug mule. Mules or mules who are like, uh, you will see them as stars, but they are also drug peddlers selling drugs. And then uh, sometimes they use them in ferrying drugs out of Nigeria. Do you understand that? Eh? A very serious allegation, Abi. I did my findings, Baba. That's how much shocked I am. No, at that point, they said, when Naramali was accusing him and accusing him, there was actually an intended plan of the young man to leave him. It was, I was going to leave their record label. And it was like, no, you can't just leave. No, leave Bao. So you now go out there and what? Go and tell everybody about what? So they put up a prayer PR uh, together. Mm? A PR together to make sure that, uh, number one, the fact that he's not following what they're asking him to do, eh? he must be punished until he comes back to his senses. Then another thing is that uh, they need to let the world know that if he starts saying anything or he starts behaving somehow, eh? it is because he is a drug addict. And he, Naira Mali, knows him very well than anybody might say out there. So they started a PR. Okay, but at the same time, Baba, hmm, they started bullying him. I'm not talking about threats, oh. I am talking about physical beating, bloody face, bloody nose, bloody, you know, beating like a superstar. Ha <laughs> ha, Baba, at least in today's time, in this uh, day and time. Eh, these are guys eh, who have uh, intellectual properties that are being streamed by millions and millions of people every day. These guys have billions of streaming and all that. They are superstar to their generation. But guess what? The Lagos thugs, the, the Malian, the Malian, all of them is not Naira Mali that they fear much. It is the force behind them. You remember, these are, these are young, young men from very, very poor background. When I say very, very poor, I'm talking about the hood. You understand that every opportunity is like a blessing. Eh? Ah, Omo, they have signed me the uh, five million era. Five million era. Uh, nah, Malian, Malian record. And I just need to continue and work hard and work hard. Maybe one day, Mr. I'll be superstar. It's an opportunity for them. Only to realize that they are just, they are only assembled them for drug running. A very big allegation, Abby. <laughs> okay. Guess what happened? They started haunting him everywhere. It's like saying everywhere you see him, beat him. If they need to, if he says they should go and get him from his house, they will bring him and they will beat, like beat him. Bloody, bloody nose, bloody mouth, everything. It got to a stage. He reported to the police. Okay, he petitioned the police that they should save his life. That these guys want to kill him. He's going into depression. He's done nothing wrong, and all of that. This was uh, in June this year. Okay, and the police ignored him. You know why? Remember that the same Naira Mali, eh? This one is a. Uh, NDLEA ambassador. Remember that. 
okay? And that's his, uh, his own uh, mugshot there, okay? When they were looking for him, wanted, at the age, as his fashion, at the age of 19, a drug uh, dealer at the age of 19 in London, a drug dealer, eh? Uh, what do you call it? Uh, a, a sexual uh, assaulter? Anon. Now, just so you know that when he now go back to Nigeria and he's now Naira Mali, you see that guy on the right? His name is uh, Sam Larry. Now, Sam Larry is uh, a celebrity criminal. People know him on, uh, on uh, Instagram, on TikTok. They have another one called Abu Abel. Abu Abel is also another social media, I mean, sorry, another celebrity criminal. These guys have connections eh, in almost uh, major places of the world. In London, they can track anybody down in London, right? Deal with you, beat you up and all of that. And you know what I mean? Like even kill you if they have to, right? So that was when I was like, ah, celebrity criminal care. Egba me to real long. Ah, on the celebrity criminal. Wow. How many of you remember that uh, NSAS guy? Eh? His name is uh, Adagu. Eh? Adagu Osha. Do you see him? Uh -huh. So, now you see on the left, the one at the top left, that happened to be the spokesperson for the Nigerian police force. Sure, you get now. Eh? Those are their connections. So, so Abu Abel, uh, Sam Larry, they are the terror to some of these young, 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 young uh, talents in Nigeria and even outside Nigeria. Sure, you get. They can always get people to to come and. Now you see that uh, Sam Larry is also the one circled at the bottom picture. Sure, you get. Eh, with Ifnumbu. In uh, in Mecca or so, uh, you know, Aoma Shiwaju. Now take a look at this picture. First, let me go back to this. Take a look at the picture circled on the top right. That is uh, Adagun, eh? Adagosha. All right, the guy that uh, was unleashed on the NSAS protesters at Alausa in Ikeja on the nineteenth of uh, October, twenty twenty. Eh, that same. Now, take a look at this picture on the left. See that red circle again? That's Adagosha. Eh? Now, see the yellow circle again? Eh? That is Sam Larry. This is their circus. Now, when you see Sam Larry, eh, Naira Mali, and their uncle, remember him? Eh? Sowo Iku. And the only way out for us is to continue to do that in the next four years. This particular aspirant, as you all know, you can go and check it. The records are there. This is somebody that has been arrested for, 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 for spending fake American dollars in a nightclub in America. And he's been detained for months. And he's, he knows that he has won mock shots for, for months before, before this whole thing was... was 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 quenched he's also known that he doesn't have the competence to do what he is, is being propelled to do the records are there in Bagara general hospital this is somebody that uh, that has gone for rehabilitation before we don't want to go too far but we know are we not Oshoni Ajeni so are you following this hmm? now let's now go back to mobad so when he reported to the police do you now see the people eh, that he was reporting to the police and why nigeria police did nothing until they kill him. It got to a stage. There are many other things though. Which are, you can say are also coming out now. From the side of his family. I'll get those on. It's just like a side. So they will see him anywhere. 
eh? everywhere. This young man came to London and he was, uh, he was meant to appear in a video shoot. In London, UK, United Kingdom, who are you? Maybe you. The young man was so terrified, so, so terrified that he couldn't show up at the location, at the address. And he kept changing location. It's like saying, uh, okay, where are you? Where are you now? Uh, I am I'm somewhere. I am somewhere. Can you, I'm coming. I'm coming. He didn't show up until 9, I mean, until 6 p.m. in the evening. That's how terrified he was, even outside Nigeria. So they did, according to what we heard, though, they, apart from the beating and beating and beating, eh, they ensure that all the places where normal, normal, he should be featuring in based on his craft and his, uh, what you call his uh, coverage, but because he failed to go back to Naira Mali, he was cut off all those opportunities. He was battling his life. He was battling and battling and he was calling for help. Nobody came to his aid. Two days ago, they said they complained of hair problem. Ear infection, they called it. Take a look at this video quickly and tell me what kind of beating will get so bad, I mean, so in that you can see the bruises, but nobody is paying attention to the, in, to the inside. This young man was subjected to over a year bullying, beating, torturing, kidnapping, mental torturing, you know, and on and on and on. Then suddenly he developed ear problem. You know, da, da, yala, yae, yae, wo, iwo, omakuni. There is a video where he was shooting a musical video with a slantan. You know, slantan. He was shooting a video with Lantan, and they were there, oh, action, as they were moving. These guys showed up, Sam Larry with Cutlass and, and Kane. Superstar. Eh? Somebody was supposed to be superstar. They were doing all of that to him, and Nigerian police didn't save him. I told you, they won't save anybody. If he gets more money now, you know, gone are the days when they will say, oh, well, this country should just have money. Money talk, bullshit work. Not in Nigeria, oh. It's not in Nigeria. Nigeria is a crime scene. That money talks bullshit work that you are saying, you are just making yourself feel good. Ordinarily, all of these thugs, they will, they, will, they, will, they will naked you. They will beat you blue black and nothing is going to happen, even with your money. Rich people will get money. Will, people will get position, get everything. They are bowing for them. That's what I've been told. You know why? Because they've got the connection. So do you see why I said, kill on shame Nigeria. Come back home. Come back home. Come back home to the criminals who are now more powerful than your police and every other security agent in Nigeria. Do you think that's a country? Do you still think that's a country? Uh, up north, when they kidnap you, if your family money to pay, if they if have mercy on you, you will come back, you come back alive. Abi, northern Nigeria, you are gone. Because anybody send you. In southern Nigeria, where these ones are like a kings on their own, they can take life, they can do whatever they can. All they have to do is just to go underground a little while and they'll come back again on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere. Omo, they kidnapped DJ Shikin. I didn't even know that. You know, a lot is they happen. Oh. So many of us, we have been taking life too serious. Oh. Following what, why we are discussing the destruction of Nigeria, impoverishment of Nigeria, the destruction of the future of Nigerian sea. Omo, People are building, they are building nests of criminals who are so bold and connected. Baba, eh? You will be so surprised that uh, is that's still actually Nigeria. It's so bad. They call the boy DJ Chicken. DJ Chicken. I think it's uh, somebody who had a big mouth like me. Maybe not like me, Sha. Because now when you bring me, they talk. You know, if I didn't use you about the time, I would have said a lot of things that would make some people buy ticket from Nigeria and come to the UK and say, you know what? I would rather go to jail than allow this guy to continue to, 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 to knock us like this. I won't go beat him. They made them arrest me at the go, at the go jail. Oh, my, in Nigeria, DJ Shikin, DJ Shikin, the guy, the Yan. They say me they go carry him, Abu Ebel. Another thug. 
celebrity thug. Abu Ebel, Abu Ebel, Baba Abel, Abu Ebel, Abu Ebel, Baba Abel. Abu... You know what I mean? They beat this guy like he stole something, Baba. The video is online. Nobody is arrested by the Nigerian police. Nobody. Because not them. Eh? So the guy that attacked the Ensas protesters, Adagun Osha, see him here. Eh? Cooling off and enjoying the comfy zone of the big boys. Eh? So when you come across them, who are you going to report them to? So when they got there, uh, in one of the videos of the assault on this young man, take a look at this one. What do you do? No. Oh. Ah, <laughs> you don't do. She mean I She mean I beef with that. You see what I'm married to? Ah. 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 Look. Don't do anything. Don't do. Everything on do, no. Oh. Ah, you see. don't do. She mean I'm mean, not the. She mean I'm the beef with that. You see what I'm married to, my ah. boss. Ah, ah. Sam Larry. So they said he parade himself as a, a a prince. From what is that? Their family in Lagos again. Hang on. The fight, the political bar created by. Uh, Kalu, Elegushi, Elegushi royal family. So uh, they were the one who said, well, the Elegushi royal family of Etiosa wishes to put on record the misinformation on the media space involving Samson, Eri Folami Balogun, a.k.a. Sam Larry. Samson, which is the one in the middle in that uh, picture, he says, Samson Balogun is not a member of the royal family and does not work for the royal family or king in any capacity. Like other celebrities, politicians, religious and community leaders, he visits the palace to pay homage to the king and seek royal blessings, just like other members of the public. While extending our condolences to the family of, and friends of late, uh, Ileri Oluwa, Aloha, Known as uh, Mohi, I mean yeah, Mo, Mobad. That is Mobad's name, by the way. Ileri Olua. Hmm. And that is like a God's uh, God's promise. We would like to add our voice to the cause for a thorough investigation into circumstances surrounding his death, with a view to unraveling any foul play. We ask for friends in the media to be mindful of the sensitivity of the issue and desist from spreading falsehood that may jeopardize this investigation. Ekori Burukudanu, whoever typed that from the office of Elegushi, that is them trying to say, hey, they were aware the kind of person that Sam Larry is. So immediately, that young man complained of a hair problem. Eh? They took him to an hospital or a chemist where a nurse injected him. And moments later, he died. Could he be suffering from uh, internal bleeding? Could he be so excuse me, could he be suffering from uh, incessant attacks from these criminals? Others are saying that uh, he was eaten with a charm. Juju, I don't think that, but for the sake of those who knows anyway, I want to go along with the theory of uh, you know endless beating. Have you seen where these guys are beating people? They really want to teach a lesson. Have you seen them before? Eh? The violence and the vulnerability of their victims. Have you witnessed some of the videos before? The unsettling situation whereby you see people who are helpless. And then you see the guys who live like lords. And they will be like, nothing will happen. Nothing. We are the government. How do you comprehend and play around that with your head? How do you kind of, uh, you know, manage that in your head and still call that a country? Uh, you know, that's what you're up against, so in case if you don't know, any of us can be their victim. Not me, anyway, not physically. Not this one, so. For those ones who will beat me blue-black, eh? It will be their own uh, leaders. They will just send this one, make them go kill me. Because this one will act like assassin. 
Because if you want, I'm not somebody you can just, even in Nigeria, I'm not somebody you can just see and just grab me like that without a fight, especially knowing what I'm up against. So therefore, it's just going to be like, if you see I'm kill him, that would be my own choice. Not this ones, because of whatever I see on social media. But take a look at it. That is what Nigeria is. You can report criminals. You can show all the evidence and the rest of that. Police will tell you, you are just overreacting. They didn't actually mean all of that. So Moba died and all hell let loose. Sam Larry is on the run. Eh? Some of their men, some of their guys, they have decided to maintain a low profile. Initially, it was more or less like, oh yeah, let's show sympathy. But when all the, all the things started coming out, all of the evidence started coming out, Baba. So now let's go over to these guys. Eh? Using, using young artists as a uh, drug mules. Eh? Some of these uh, clubs that you have uh, all over the place in Nigeria today, you will see so many of them, they will say they are club owners, billionaires, drug dealers. Eh? And when you look at their old circle, when you see all of their circle, you can tell eh, who is their patron. It is like opening a Taiwan rice line eh, in the 80s. Hang on, no. Confessor Shoyinka Gossef. If I say Confessor Shoyinka Gossef, he don't carry us a uh, bobo. So, anyway, sha, the rice line, sha, eh, the Taiwan, no, a bit of Guinea or whatever it is. When you look at all these guys, eh, and then you see their godfather. And you look at the politics of Nigeria. And then you look around again and say, well, do you need anybody else to explain this to you? That you are already living in a banana republic where lawlessness eh, is actually the order of the day. Whether you want, you, you, you know, a lot of people are now, they are now having to kind of comply, coexist with them. Is they are the danger people know and they have to avoid. Criminals, oh, criminals. They are, the, they, are the, they are also the boyfriends of some of their actors and actresses in Nigeria, by the way. They have so much money. And then we realize that, where could that come from now? Obviously, drug dealing, not just the music anymore. And they said, with all the revelations that are now coming out, eh? That is now leading to okay, go and investigate. Investigate the way they will we investigate who. Eh? They know that in another three, four days, or less maximum measure in another two weeks, a lot would have happened in Nigeria that you won't even remember the Mobad. But I felt so bad for the young man. I felt so bad. Like, you know, if you are the type that actually grew up, not with uh, any spoon for your mouth. You know, some people, they will say, oh, he was born with a silver spoon. Some will say, yeah, hey, we were born with a wooden spoon. I say, uh, we are from the humble beginning. About those English and all of that you are using to describe yourself. Some of us, eh, when they burn us, spoon, no day, our, whether not wooden, no, whether not stone, no, whether not uh, metal, no spoon at all. There are people who grew up like that. So when you come out of that struggle of childhood, where you saw your parents struggled all their lives and yet they couldn't really provide enough. Eh? And as a young man, you, you sort of strive to want to kind of, you know, make something out of life. And at that age, it happened. And there you are. Those who are supposed to nurture you, mentor you, they would rather have you eh, kind of conditioned the way they want it to be even if they have to kill you. They torture this young man, not the only the physical ones, though. the mental torture, that he had, a, he had a son, Baba. This guy gave birth to his son. Who, now, until he died, people started hearing that he had a son four months ago. That's how scared he was. And nobody came to help him. Nobody. Yeah, he had some friends who were supporting him. I'm talking about helping him out of the hands of these criminals. Today he's dead, okay? And yeah, like every other thing that has been happening in Nigeria, he, Nigeria has happened to him. 
Nobody is going to, because now, somebody died in the evening of uh, Tuesday. Eh? By 10 o'clock on uh, Wednesday, he is not a Muslim. They've already started digging to bury him. Why the rush? Eh? Where they are digging to bury him, they started accusing his wife. It is that his wife. It must be that his wife that kill him. If, they, if anybody is no, they should warn out. If she comes here, we will take everything. If she brings that car, you know that car, that car that uh, he just bought. If she brings that car here, we will collect the car. We will collect the key to the house from her. We will collect uh, all the uh, musical right of it. I was like, what the hell? They haven't even buried him. They were fighting for where to dig to bury. Why they were digging? They were already. Eh? To the point that when they finally buried him, it was done so, so horridly that you'll be asking, why? I mean, why? Why? Like, it's, you know, there's so much to see come out to. Then, some of his own friends, you know, like those who are like other young, young people who have also made names for themselves when it comes to using their talent in this, uh, you know what I mean? Like, they've done well. The cutest baller. And some of other guys who went there for to pay their respect inside that same Lagos, mind you, Princess Enyara Kodu is Kodu part of Lagos, by the way. Still, no, sorry, still part of Lagos. We know that Ikorodu is Ijebu. She, you know, she, you know, say Ikorodu is Ijebu. I don't want to start fight, so I just know, say the Anyong rest and the rest, uh, eh, we are Ijebus, but anyway, you can also have other, what have you. She Lagos, she Ikorodu is part of Lagos. I be make I just keep my mouth shut. Eh? Is Ikorodu part of your mega city? I be part of your mega slum. Ma, I keep quiet. Mind your business. Ma, you gonna continue talking? Okay. On that one, eh? I agree with you. I'll mind my business. Okay. So those who went there to pay their last respect, right? To this young man that that died suddenly. No autopsy, no nothing. But hurriedly, uh, hurriedly buried. Baba, waiting their eyes see. My eyes see, I see am. You no good. I'll show you. Eh? I mean, like, if you ask them, they will tell you. Ah, oh, waiting our eyes see. For more bad barrier. Eh? My you no good. Because me self see am. Easy, 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 easy. Make I not come for that again. Come they go treat, go hospital again. I beg. Easy. Bus start for road, go go. How many minutes? Five. Eh? Five. Eh?
the mega shitty. Those guys left their cars when the mob, eh, the thugs, attacked them for coming to pay their respects. Eh, to Ileri Oluwa, Mobad. So they had to get people to go and help them get their cars so after getting themselves to safety far, far away from the place. So they said they were going to deal with his wife. You know, typical, typical poor people in Nigeria. Eh? Once you begin to make money, young soldiers, look at me very well. Oh. Any of you, eh? This one is not even just about the young, even the you, our older uncles, eh? daddies and mommies. This goes with you as well. You can also make sure your children, they do the same. The moment you begin to make money, eh? And you marry, whether you marry somebody or you have a child, the moment you begin to make money, begin to set your priority. Oh, sure you get me now, eh? Nobody is guaranteed tomorrow. You know, that is why when people want to use, uh, what do you call it? Uh, getting old or uh, making it in life as the reason why they don't want to speak the truth because they don't want their pastor to cause them so that they, don't, they will not go and die like Agbalumo. Sure you get, I don't want to die like Agbalumo. I don't want to die like Agbalumo. Because they don't want to die. They don't want to say the truth. They don't want to offend their pastors. They don't want to offend their mama lawos, baba lawos, the witches and the wizards, all of them. They don't want to offend them because they want to live long. They don't want to die young. Forgetting the fact that nobody has control over that. In a country like Nigeria, it is easier for you eh, to die young than anywhere else in the world. That's a fact because what will kill you in Nigeria is 100% sure. Some of them are 100% sure they can never kill you elsewhere. Do you understand? And that is why when people say, hey, 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 she will die by like this. You see, when the Olori Bruku elders are the Olori Bruku old men and women, eh, who don't give a damn about us actually getting old without being depressed at the age of 25 because of the economic uh, destruction they have brought upon us. Young people, young people, young people are suffering depression every now and then because they have to survive in that uh, contraption. Now, the people will say everything they are doing will kill us anyway. If we get to 40, 45, eh? They say, well, we have lived long enough. Life expectancy in Nigeria, 45, 47. What does that tell you? It simply means they didn't wish us to grow old anyway. So you better just say your mind. Eh? Just say your mind. Uh, because what, what does it matter? You are not in control of it. Even though they are doing everything to make sure that uh, you die young anyway. There is no better hospital. Your children are not having access to better education. Okay? Ignorance everywhere. No better infrastructure. No security. So you're going to die young anyway. If you grow older, eh? may God not keep us alive because of poverty. So they, all their actions is already against you. Why don't you just speak your mind? If you go die young, if you go grow old, it doesn't matter anymore. At least you will satisfy yourself that, uh, you know, you didn't die, just die. You already lived. There are many people who will never live. There are many people who are so scared of death. They are so scared of death that they will never live. Ah, no. Ah. Why don't you just, ah, you know, ah, I'm, I'm, you know, ah, I want to live old, I want to grow old. Only for them to be what? To be caught in their prime. At least you are seeing that every day in Nigeria, but that's not the point. To so somebody like me who already have that kind of mentality, eh? death is the, I mean, death is actually not the end per se. That is why you have to first live. If you don't live and you die, eh? you are just a statistic. So young soldiers, don't let death scare you. Don't let anybody use death to make you, to, to condition your mind. You need to live and live free. The fact that you want to live and live free, also at the same time, always let the mortality of that death. Don't be scared about it. What are you going to do? Eh? If I sit down here now and it's about the time for me to die. Eh? Baba, what I want to do? Waiting. Eh? 
if something happened on that air, you know, bah! and I'm like, I say, am I going to stand up? Am I going to st stand up? Uba, we will meet him law. I will, I will the law. Now, now go consider. They say, ah, me uri ru iku iri o. Ha, allo woman to be law ba o. Iru iku o lele and the rest. E inte de wala ye le mama so bugbo ye. But the fact that you are still here, young soldier, the moment you begin to make money, set your priority o. If you have a chance that you have somebody you are in love with, and this person either you are already married or not married, if you have planned for them and you are beginning to make something, begin to pen and set your priority, so that uh, you will not, you will not, you, I mean, you will not do all of the work, suffer all the suffer alone, and the people who have no idea how you came by and then you break through. They will now be the ones to now decide who is going to have right to your, to your properties and everything. Mobad has a son. His son is four months old. At his barrier, some people who have no idea how he was running his life, they were already planning on how they are going to deal with his wife. Don't let that be your case. If you don't have wife or anything, when you begin to make money, if now your parents, you want to set the priority on, set it on them. There's nothing wrong in that, oh. It's not because you are wishing to die, you. Don't think that setting your priorities, yeah, if anything happened to me today, eh, give everything to, to my mom and dad, or give it to my mom. It's not because you want to die, you. It is simply because if that should happen, your family will not have to, the people who you love, they will not have to agonize twice, losing you, then losing everything that could have actually kept them connected to you. I hope uh, this young man will, see, will get justice. And his wife will get every support uh, she deserves. And his son eh, will have a future that uh, he truly, truly, truly deserves. But this is so bad, right? That I couldn't ignore it. And knowing the characters behind the whole thing, it just makes much sense that there will be more victims. This is just the first one that just came to public. Hmm? I'm going to make another tea. I'm going to take calls. Uh, before we uh, call it uh, night, you can still like my broadcast, by the way. Like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. All right? And when I get back, I will take calls, okay? Don't go anywhere yet. Like that i also have a caller by the way have you liked this broadcast if i may ask have you liked this come on we have over three thousand of us on youtube and over 300 of us on facebook but look at it i mean come on just leave the comment section right like the broadcast then come back to the comment section 
and talk to Prince Jejeman. How are you? Yes, Baba. The Prince. I'm fine, no, my good general. How are you, my, sir? <laughs> Respect, I'm fine, are you? We are very well, thanks. You are my first caller again yeah. tonight. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, thank you so much for making me the first caller again today. Thank yeah, you. Um, Go on. Baba, you know, yesterday um, I talked about security uh, when I called in. You know, we will not uh, lose focus. You know, security is number one um, priority of any government that is a government. It should be. In a, hmm. So that is the reason why um, I always um, talk about security when there is need for it. You see, my good general, when I was in Nigeria, I'm just, uh, this is the uh, first time I'm saying this um, publicly. Mm. You see, uh, there was a time I had a case at uh, Banti. Banti, I had a case at Banti. You know, that case uh, is a friend of mine that um, uh, it was just a business um, um, uh, 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 that we did or uh, something. Uh, 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 yes, business. Then okay. um, someone uh, came in. Um, and um, that's how we get to Panti, you know, Panti at Yaba. Hmm. That case, I was a witness in that case. That, my friend, is the main accused, hmm. you know. But due to how the, the oppression there, I have to stay back. I say, yes, I will remain in this matter to see the end. You know, it, uh, we stayed in that... Uh, um, stage a uh, cell for good one month before they took the case to court, and that case in the court for six years we were in the court mm. before the case was finally um, discharged and uh, acquitted. Why we are in the court? You know that somebody, the person that was accusing us in that uh, 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 case, he, there was somebody that he brought. This this person, what he does is that anywhere he comes to court, any court around in Nigeria, anywhere he sees somebody that has case, he will buy the case. Hmm. They are connected to all, all these uh, magistrates. You know, you will see him come into the court, he will go into the uh, magistrate uh, um, um, office and come out. You understand? Then they will not bill you how much you are going to pay to settle out the case. If you don't, that's how they will continue to drag you until you submit. Until you f conform. Yes. You know, my something I found out when I was inside the cell, there was one guy who was in that cell for good four years, ATM, awaiting trial. You know the, the, why that guy was in the, the reason why they kept him there? They came to arrest the sister. They said that the sister was uh, befriending a, a, an armed robber. So when they came to the house to arrest the sister, the sister wasn't around. They arrested that the boy, the, the brother. That boy was kept inside Banti for good four years. ATM, I was in trial. His case, his case was not hard. You understand? I just that's that's how bad that country is. That's how bad, dangerous that country is. Is in my ego. They, if that country, if they don't uh, 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 dismantle that country, shut it down completely, life will continue to waste every day. You know. I just say, let me. Uh, Thank you so much, uh, Prince. Yeah. Keep with us on this on uh, your channel today. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. yeah for a good job. That. That's uh, Prince JJ Man, uh dropping his uh, own uh, uh, piece to uh sharing tomorrow let me say this to you again let me remind you tomorrow the name of our program the title of our program tomorrow is going to be share your experience share with us okay if you can do it in few minutes share with us what was that thing the last thing that got you made up your mind that you are leaving nigeria and it's going to be an open mic we're going to do that tomorrow get ready for it this is not going to be about us talking, just talking about uh, 
the wrongs and all of that in Nigeria. You are going to tell your story. What happened? When was that time that you felt like, Omo, this is it. I'm done. I'm going. And some of you have never looked back since then. I want you to start sharing that story now eh, with so many of us. So let me take this. Hello there. Please, my ego. Yes, sir. My ego, yes. Baba. Sir. I've been keeping quiet. We saw this, this, but this is we talked this night. Just maybe say we can chip in something. Yeah, you cannot ignore. Brother. Okay. Go ahead, please. Oh, no. uh, a lot of things is happening. Hmm. And uh, I will make it brief. You know, when it comes to all this uh, music and all those stuff, hmm. uh, the business exists a long time, but it's, it's just uh, in another level. Been, uh, people never just paid attention, Neil. <laughs> no, they paid attention a long, long time. Hmm. Long time. Especially in Lagos. I can tell you categorically. Hmm. It's only one out. It's only one out of ten big men in Lagos that doesn't push in dealing brave business. Hmm. The rice business, a bit of business. Let's be very clear, JJ. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a business. Let's say deal. <laughs> so the people understand now. Okay. It's one in ten out of Lagos that doesn't do, do that business. And at including the same the so that's going Lagos, yeah. Lagos. And at the same as they say that Igbo is the push drug. So have we been lying to ourselves? No, no, no. Brother, brother. So brother, it's been a free for all. This thing I'm tell, I will tell you a story. I will, I will tell you some of my experience. Oh, yeah. My experience in the uh, early 90s. That was before Abasha died. That is around 95, 96. Hmm. I went to somebody somewhere, somebody in Lagos. That time, I was uh, I was still a, I just started service, and I went with some people. The old man is a famous big man, big man in that uh, Jota area, brother. Mm. The guy who died. All those imagine at that time, what of the eighties? So the business involved is just you know, on another level now. And I will advise people right now they what is going on with the country. Jet. Yeah, presidential jet to carry uh, drugs. Uh, Nobody go check. They are like the biggest, biggest now. Yeah? Oh. That is, you know, the, the effect of what happened in the 80s, 90s is what you are seeing now. Hmm. You understand? Uh, there, there was a time in Italy that they had to get to some of those uh, Americans to, to cop them. But not that those things stop completely in Italy. It's here, at least, but it's just in another level. That's what is going on in Nigeria. Mm. You see, when we talk of security, uh, my brother, anybody who is in Nigeria who wants to survive in Nigeria, you have to play into their way. You have to play, you have to you have fight to play according to the rule yeah, or else. Yeah, yeah. You're just wasting your time. What is all this, all this gangster that you are seeing? Hmm. Started from uh, courtesy, from a year, black cars, all those, uh, a year, whatever, buka, all of all those groups. That's why this movement couldn't get out of them because it's like a network. Hmm. And if you look at that Naira Mali, it's, it's like it belongs to all those black cars group. Even though he might not physically join them before, but he has been initiated. That I can't give too much detail. But these are what I'm saying. So that's why it's so hard for him to get out of that, broke out of uh, that, that they achieved. Because they are, yeah, even anywhere you go, uh, because the police who, 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 who you want to go and complain to is boys. Maybe the, your guy might not be, belong to the court system, be, belongs to the court. But the boys that is using at the office are also in the to the police. Well, so they join. The they are all the Nigerian they, spokesperson. Are they Jobby or something? Uh, With them there. That's the spokesperson uh, for the Euro police. That's the guy who said what MC Olu almost said in that video. He was just joking. He didn't mean it. That's the guy on the top. If you check your uh, screen right uh, now, you will see him at 